In this video, we're going to be talking about our predictions for interest rates, prices, sales and inventory levels, as well as some wild cards to be on the lookout for in 2023. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses. And I'm here with... Sam Iliopoulos. I'm one of the top 300 loan officers in the United States and I work with Guaranteed Rate. Now, let's start with interest rates, which I'm pretty sure is pretty much all your world, Sammy. So what are your predictions for what we're going to see ultimately in 2023? Well, Fannie Mae's Home Purchase Sentiment Index, HPSI, showed some signs of life in November, posting its first increase in nine months. It's say HPSI five times fast, but break that down for me because I don't know what any of that means. Sure. Why does all that matter? <laughs> well, the uptick is a good sign for things to come as both consumer home buying and home selling sentiment are significantly lower than they were last year, which in my opinion is unsurprising considering mortgage rates have more than doubled and home prices remain elevated. I expect interest rates to be much more stable compared to 2022, in addition to seeing some potential drops from time to time. But for now, consumers should continue to expect mortgage rates to rise slowly. Okay. I also expect mortgage demand to continue to be curtailed by affordability constraints in 2023, as mortgage application volume in 2022 finished a 26-year low. All right. So to recap, your prediction is ultimately that rates are going to go down, or they're going to remain elevated, I should say, and that we might see some drops from time to time. But basically, if I'm hearing this correctly, we're not going to see 4% anytime soon. Yeah, I don't see any chance of that happening in 2023. It doesn't make sense if, there's, if the reason you're not buying now is because you think mortgage rates are going down. Okay, all that makes sense. Jeff, I think prices and the sales inventory levels are your world. What are your predictions here? All right. So with prices, I mean, this is a million dollar question. It really depends on where you live in the U.S. I'm talking about here in Massachusetts. And I ultimately believe that they're going to be flat this year. And here are my reasons why. The first one is that there's going to be very little to no inventory growth. I just don't see a huge increase in inventory. Sellers are just not coming to market as buyers are really stepping out of the market. Mm -hmm. And I believe that yin and yang that we're seeing now is ultimately going to continue. Um, you know, if more buyers come to the market, then you're going to see more sellers come to the market. And then sales, they're going to be off the 2021 and 2022 levels. And those were some of our best years in history. And I have that graph there, which you can see now. But I really believe sales, they're going to be back to the 2013, 2014 levels. Mm -hmm. They're not going to crater, which so many people are saying. And again, that's the Massachusetts market. And we've really gotten through all that interest rate shock that you were talking about. And I don't see another real big shock that's really going to decrease the sales levels any lower. Now, inventory, it's going to continue to increase. But again, very slowly. It may even look flat when you're looking at it from a year-to-year -year comparison in the spring market mm -hmm. um, when we saw a big run-up in 2022. But I really, I just don't see any external factors that's going to cause that surge of inventory aside from the economy, which I know we're going to talk about soon. Mm -hmm. Now, sellers that are comfortable in their two to low 3% mortgages, I know I'm one, they're not going anywhere <laughs> unless interest rates go down significantly. And I'm thinking like low fours, maybe high threes. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it to them. They're just going to stay in their current houses and you know continue to make it work by continuing to squeeze in there or maybe doing an addition. I just don't see there being a big surge of distressed properties as of now um, in our current economic standing, I should say. And this could change. We could see a huge uptick in that unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I mentioned a wild card just a couple moments ago. So I think let's talk about some things that could really throw these predictions off and out the window. Sammy, so, mean, what are your thoughts on some of those? My three are job security, total income, and inflation. Okay. I mean, I was just going to say the economy person. It's, <laughs> it's the economy, stupid, right? Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like we're on the same page there, but talk to me about your thoughts on this job security aspect. Sure. Well, the Fed is increasing interest rates specifically to slow down the economy with the goal of increasing the unemployment rate in this country. So if there's not enough job security because of, weak, of, the, of a weaker economy, then people will be less likely to buy a house. Yeah, I can see that. I agree. So... Job security, it's very important. People having jobs means that they're going to be able to pay their mortgages, and people that are paying their mortgages are not going to be the ones getting foreclosed on, and while well, foreclosures create kind of that tailspin in markets. So I couldn't agree with you more there and also mm -hmm. from that buying side. So talk to me about your thoughts on that total income that you were talking about. Sure. I worry that in the last 12 months, there's been zero net change in income. That means people may not have enough money to upgrade or go to a new home. Um, it is further exasperated with inflation and interest rate increases. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much a double whammy that us as consumers have been feeling. So you mentioned inflation. So let's talk about that a little bit more. At the end of the year, we've got some good news that it seems like it's finally starting to slow. So 
What are your thoughts there? Sure. Um, inflation is rampant. Um, this is certainly, uh, this will cur curtail mortgage demand as there's a tremendous amount of pressure from the Fed to raise rates. Um, we expect rates to become a little bit uh, less volatile compared to 22, uh, but we are literally almost double, more than double than what the average 30 year fixed rate was a year ago. I mean, that's crazy. And I think that all makes sense. And if inflation doesn't get under control, then that ultimately means the Fed's going to continue to hammer away. But even then, it's going to be really interesting to see if the Fed really has the stomach for continuing to increase the federal funds rate if employment really starts getting real bad. And that's the one thing I have to add in to your three is the Fed. Everyone is expecting the Fed to slow down these interest rate hikes and stop in early 2023. If they don't and they need to continue to cut this economy down further, then that really is going to really play into your other three cards there. So, well, I, Sammy, I think we did it. Yep. Those are our predictions for 2023. Yes, yeah, so if you're thinking about making a move in Massachusetts, then be sure to reach out to this guy. Uh, he's one of the top agents in the state, and he'll take great care of you. Can't begin to tell you how much uh, experience matters, and uh, you know when you're trying to find quality agent, um, can't find a different. I'm the guy for you. And if you're looking to buy a house, whether it be here in Massachusetts or really anywhere in the country, uh, then Sammy's the guy that can help you out. He works for the number two lender in the country, is one of the top 10 brokers in that company, one of the top 300 in the country. And I've worked with a lot of mortgage brokers in the past. I can promise you, you're not going to regret reaching out to Sammy. So our contact information, it's in the description below. So let us know if you have any questions. And until next time.